So, uh, you want to log in. Remember, on Google Plus, it asks us to create a personal account, and then we can use the business account. So, I've logged in. I'm on my personal account. I can tell that easily because uh, my picture is on the top right. So, one way to quickly tell which version you're using is what picture is on the top right corner. If you haven't put your own picture there yet, it'll, it'll show that little man, that little blue man. But hopefully you add your own picture so you can see yourself. And then if you click there, it'll show you any pages you've created. If you add, haven't added the logo to your Google Plus page yet, it's going to show like that little gift, that little, uh, I think it looks like a little blue present. I don't, oh yeah, like these right here. So I created Victor's Bakery Alien last time. So you want to click on your Google Plus page and you'll confirm on the top right that it's your business. So either you'll have your logo or the name of your business. So log in and make sure you're editing your business. Okay, so if we usually want to post some things before we try to get followers, at a certain point, well, okay, we posted enough things, three to five things. Three to five tweets, three to five Google Plus posts, three to five pins. We just need to post some content. I don't have any followers at the moment, even though I followed six victors in Google Plus, none of them followed me back. Well, the tactic of you following an account will help you to some degree, but now we'll, talk, we'll look at the tactic that is much, much better. So here it is. Uh, you're logged into your business account, and this will work also for personal. Uh, I like using communities for personal as well, but here it is for business. On the top left corner, hover over the mouse, uh, hover your mouse over the menu, and you'll see something called communities. So click on communities from the top left menu. It'll give us some suggestions. So let me tell you what we're looking at here. These are some suggestions right here. The YouTube community, the SEO community, the Google Plus small business community. These are places where people that have an account, people and companies that have an account on Google Plus, join together on one particular topic. So here, Google, the first one on my screen has 105,000 members. This YouTube one has 119 this YouTube promotion one has 364,000. So you may have different ones than me, but for example, I'm seeing this one, Organic World. This one's got 120,000 members. This one about LinkedIn has 190,000 members. What's this one here? Joke of the Day. This has 1.3 million members. Okay, well, using communities is super valuable because here I have zero followers, but if I post something to a community here, suddenly I have an audience of 105,000 or 1 million or 2,000 or whatever size community. So you might say, great, I'm going to join all of these. Join, 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 join. Sure, but what would be better is to join communities related to the topics of what your company is. So I've got this Victor's Bakery. These maybe don't quite apply. Maybe that organic one does. But that's why we've got search on the top right. You see there. Let's search for a keyword about what your business is about. And of course, you can join any of these suggestions. But let's instead search for a, a more targeted community. So I've got this bakery. Let's see if I look for cookies. So type a keyword and press enter. 
and it says Cake Sweets and Biscuits, 2,500 members, Cake Divas, 1,000 members, Tough Cookie Mommy, 694 members. Okay, these sound pretty good too. So now you might think, okay, let me click join, 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 join. We want to hold up again here. We want to search for communities that we care about, number one. We want to join communities that are not too small. I would recommend joining communities that have at least 1,000 members. If I join one that has 40, that's not enough of an audience for me to post something and people will care. 500 is good, 1,000 is better, 10,000 is better, but then at a certain point, too many people. If I join a 1 million member community, that means people are posting and posting and posting and my stuff's going to get pushed down and maybe lost. So there is maybe a sweet spot in between 1,000 and like 200,000, let's say. When you get to really high numbers or really low numbers, it might not be as effective. So okay, I found two right there that have 1,000. I still don't want to click because I want to look. This has 1,000 members and 1,200 posts. This has 2,500 members and 2,700 posts. Okay, what, what, what does that mean? If I click, go ahead and click on, a, on the thumbnail, the preview of the community. Don't click join yet. Click on the, on the preview logo or whatever you call that. Click on that to actually see what are people posting. So right here, Ravi posted this picture of a sports cake. And Lana posted this one, a really pink cake. And uh, Betsy posted this, Jurassic World cake. That looks really cool. So I'm, post I'm seeing what people are posting. You can get a preview. Look at that cool Yoda cake right there. So you can see what people are posting. Look at that cool zombie cake. So, okay, people are posting stuff. Cool. But are people caring? Are people replying, commenting, sharing, plus oneing? Are people active? Let's see, Ravi posted this one and it's got two plus ones. Lana posted that one, it's only got one plus one. That one's got plus three, plus three, plus three, plus one, plus one, plus eight. Okay, that one stood out to people a bit. Plus five and a couple of comments, beer, this beer cake. <laughs> so the point is, you want to join communities that have at least a thousand that have people posting stuff, and not the same people over and over. I've already seen Lana posting over and over and over. You want to see a variety of people posting. You also want to see people reacting to this, because I want to post something here, and I want people to react. I don't just want to be posting pictures and no one cares. So the activity in this particular community seems pretty good. This one's got 15 plus ones, and this one's got two and four. There's plenty of communities out there that have 5,000 members, people posting a bunch of stuff, and no one is paying attention because people are just using the community to promote themselves only and not really for communities. So this one follows my criteria pretty well. What I also want to do is every community is going to have some kind of moderators or rules. These communities are not invented by Google+. These are invented by people that use Google+, or companies that use Google+. So every community might have its own set of rules. Let me show you some examples over here. DC Comics community. Look at all these rules here. No spam. This includes resharing posts. No posts or reposts. No advertisement. There are three post limit per 24 hours. No profanity. No nudity. So this one has rules. If you don't follow any of the rules, a moderator could delete your post at best and ban you at worst. So then you lose out on that audience of 62,000 people. So this is not Google Plus policing the communities. These are the people themselves policing it. These are moderators. There could be one or many. There could be nice monitor or moderators. There could be mean moderators. Most of the communities I've dealt with have been nice. There's been one that has been the mean person. It seems that this person can, can created this community and totally controls it like some kind of tyrant. 
and he deletes posts all the time. He's deleted my posts, and my posts are cool. I don't know why he deleted them. So always read the rules. Some are very lenient, and some are strict. This one about cake divas seems to be totally open. It doesn't say anything about no spam posts, no links, don't overpost. It seems like for cake and cookie decorators to share and enjoy. Great. So it's pretty open. Let's say I found a community, it's it's hitting all of the it's hitting all of my criteria. Well, I want to click join at the top right. And the point of that is now, look at this, I am able to post to this community. I'm gonna reach 1,000 people, where right now I have zero followers. I'm gonna join this comic book community and now I can reach 62,000 people. I can post to these communities and reach an audience that I couldn't by myself starting from scratch. We have to work a bit hard on Twitter to get followers. We have to work a bit hard on Pinterest and Instagram and, and all of those networks. But really, on Google+, Plus, you find a good community, you post good content, and you're going to get lots of followers. Because the people that care about a topic are joined together in a community. So now if I post something to this community, a text or a photo or whatever, I could potentially get more notifications. I logged in and I had no notifications here. No one cares. People care on my personal one because I often post to communities. But here on my business one, well, I'm going to join a community and I can add whatever I want. And the community might also have, like, sections. This one doesn't. It just has one main section. Over here on this DC Comics one, if I post something, they want you to put it in a category, maybe in, in the polls category, in the videos category. So some communities say, you know, post something and make sure you put it in the right category or it could be deleted. So you want to read the rules, follow the rules, post what's relevant, and you're going to see that you're going to start to get activity. So in this one here, I'm going to write just some simple text. Um, we're happy to join this community. We're going to share so many tasty cakes. They will make you hungry. One thousand five hundred is too much. One thousand five hundred or one one thousand or one million. One million five hundred thousand. I mean, what's too much? Too much might be like a million. If you've got like 700,000, that's a little high, but it might be okay. So I'd say a million might be a bit high. So I'm going to post this, share it. Maybe I'll get some attention, maybe I won't. But I'm, I'm going to join a community that uh, relates to my company. If I go back to the communities screen, and now it'll show me these are the ones you've joined. And as you start more, joining more communities, it'll suggest you more communities. There's no limit to how many you can join. So I recommend you join as many as is relevant. So here's here it is from my personal one. Um, I've joined DC Comics, Disney, Art, Google Helps, Comic-Con, JavaScript, Recipes, Nintendo, DeviantArt, Cats. So I just joined a bunch of them because I post stuff. I, I create, you know, I my hobby, one of my hobbies is comic books. I post stuff about comic books. I like to use uh, Windows, Android, whatever apps I post in there. I like to uh, make videos on YouTube that I can post to a community there. So I'm going to create content and post it in the appropriate place because if I, if I don't have any followers and I'm just posting and posting, no one's going to see it, perhaps as fast as if I had posted directly to a Star Trek community where everyone that cares about Star Trek is there. I post something there and I'm going to see lots of plus ones and comments and replies because I'm posting something that someone would be interested in. So about the too many, you know, I am breaking my own rule, but I do follow two communities that have more than a million, the Android community and the Funny Pictures community. Those two, I do like posting in there and the problem, of course, is that, you know, so many people are posting there, your stuff's going to get swept over. 
swept, you know, swept under. But if it's eye-catching, it's interesting, it fits in the community, you will get activity. I post, I've posted stuff in the Android community, like I'm on the side, I like to work on apps and such. I'm working on an app that is a, uh, a recipe app for, for drinks. You know, I like to cook and I like to bake, but I also like to do a little mixology amateur on the side. So I'm making a little app about um, drinks. You put in ingredients that you have and it'll show you your recipes and such. I went to that community and I asked, hey everyone, I'm making an app about drinks. What do you think would be some cool features about it? And I got replies. And I got plus ones. And, you know, what's the point of you using your social media? In my case, for myself, I'm just in it for the attention. But for my... Uh, for my businesses and such, well, maybe to sell something, to um, get subscribers to a newsletter, to tell people, uh, you know, join this nonprofit. So I could search for here, you know, save the children um, communities. I could go for, you know, environmentalist communities and post the stuff to the people that care. This is the big secret about Google+. And it works because not to show off, but let me show off right here. <laughs> you know, I've used Google Plus for a little while since it came out, and I like it, and it works to go with communities. Question? Uh, in order to post, you need to be inside uh, one of those groups? Yes. You do have to click Join, and then you'll have the option to be able to post to the community. Yeah, I mean, after you join, when you post, you, you post oh, okay. generally or inside of each of those? Let me show you. It's either way, because let's say I've joined that community and I'm not in the community. I went to my stream, my home stream. I'm not in the community. If, I, if I'm about to share something on the two, now I have the option at the end, your communities. So you don't have to be in the community to post to it. You can post from wherever. You just have to make sure you select the community in the two box. Usually what I do, though, is I do go directly to the community. So I go to a community, and I share from there. I don't know why. There's no big difference, I think, positive or negative. I just usually have done it that way, so that I know that I'm posting to the community that I think, that I think I'm posting to, that I'm trying to post to. So just to show you this, I'm going to go rip off a picture of cookies and I'm going to post it on a community to show you that if you do post interesting things to communities, you will see results. So posting an interesting picture, posting a funny picture, posting a funny link, a video, and asking a question oftentimes gets you results. People want to, to answer. And so if you're doing it in a community, you get better results. So I'm going to say here, what's the wackiest cookie you've ever eaten? I'm going to say it is better on the community. Once you have an audience and you're just posting on your own personal page, then you'll start to get activity. But when you're brand new, I would suggest to post to communities, which are still going to show up on your own home profile. It's just that you're targeting it to the community. So I'm sharing this to this community. And if someone goes to my page, they are going to see that I posted it unless the settings of the community don't show it but like that if, if someone came to my community I mean someone came to my profile my business page if someone came to my business page and has not friended me yet they would still see what I posted to those communities and it would say up here it's this is posted to the cake divas community So sometimes community have small members, but also they have visitors, you know. They yeah. come and visit and they don't want to join, but they still, they still visit, no? Exactly. If you go to a community that you have not joined yet, you still have 
the ability to see that stuff. So right here I'm looking at this picture. I can still plus one that. So now Lars Doning got a notification and I can share it, but I can't comment. If you want to comment, you do have to join a community, but you can still plus one then and share them, but you can't comment. Some communities, I don't think I saw examples here, but some communities don't say join, they say ask, oh here we go, ask to join. So if you want to be part of the Google Plus small business community, that one's a bit more exclusive, like a country club. So here you have to click ask to join and someone so some moderator that controls that community is going to check your profile and see that you're worthy enough to join the community. That's why I always say, make sure your profile is complete, that you have your picture and logo and all of that, that you've got a biography set up, that you've got three to five posts, because if they check my uh, biography, my profile right now, it's so empty. They're going to say, no, they're not going to let me join. But if I've got some posts, and pictures and biography they might say yes and I might be reaching a really good audience here it might not have 50,000 members but those 12,000 are very dedicated and they do follow your links and buy your products and all of that they, they're just exclusive so this one Google Plus for small business the rules welcome to Google Plus for small business our professional business community specializes in tips techniques and the latest news about local marketing. The emphasis here is on discussion, sharing, note, no self-promotion, and individual intros are not allowed. See links below for more info. So this one seems kind of strict. Well, number one, it's strict because it, you have to ask to join, and number two, a bunch of rules. But if you get accepted and if you post the proper content, you might get a lot of traffic out of this network. You might get sales, you might get subscribers, whatever it is you want to do online. You might get hired. Maybe you join a graphic design community and someone sees your work there and then they contact you and hire you. And that's, again, the best scenario about all of the social media. You post some stuff, you post content to achieve a goal. To get hired, to get famous, to get sales, to get subscribers, etc. You have the ability also, when you look at the communities page, to create a community. I would not recommend it. You probably, there's already probably a community of what you're trying to do. So let's say I'm going to create a quick community. I can do public or private. I'm going to do public. What do you want to call it? Let's say Amazing Bakers. Can anyone join or do they need permission? That's the ask to join. I'm going to say anyone can join. Create. Sometimes if your community name is very similar to an existing community, it'll recommend, hey, there's already a community like that. Are you sure you want to create one? But here it let me. The community is public. Great. Now I've got to, I've got to get I've got to get people to join. So now not only do I have to get followers from my own profile, I have to get followers from my community. I don't want to do that double work, and I don't recommend it. Piggyback on top of existing communities. Uh, if you already have a large following, um, then maybe create a community and get followers to your community. But I, I honestly don't recommend making your own communities because it's just more work then now you've got to become a moderator. You've got to go in and delete the spam and the people that are off topic and the mean people. Or you can let it go totally free for all and then some communities devolve into spam that just uh, companies are just pu putting their their links with nothing meaningful and then and then no one joins you because then they it's not a good community. So you should just search a variety of communities, and as you start to to be members of communities, you're going to get suggestions about other related things.
when I come back to the community screen, it'll tell me at a glance how many new messages have been added since the last time I visited. So some can be very popular. All right, so this baking community has 75,000 members. I'm going to take a look at its rules. Share and discover the most delicious recipes imaginable. We'll be posting a range of treats and sweets, blah, blah, blah. Please note, off-topic conversations, images, and comments may be moderated. If posting images that you have found elsewhere on the internet, please copy and paste the source link. All posts should be either an image, a link, or a clear question discussion topic. Otherwise, they may be moderated. The language of this community is English. So if I were posting something here, I would make sure to put a picture, maybe a link, follow the rules, don't make it profane, put it in the right category. This one's got a bunch, cakes, um, biscuits and cookies, sweet treats, puddings. So I would be targeting a community, targeting a category, and then eventually I do get activity, notifications, like favorites, I'm sorry, like plus ones and follows and comments. So communities are very useful and on top of that you also want to not only post your stuff all the time, that's just one way. That's a, that's a monologue. You're only speaking to people. You want a dialogue, which is multiple conversations, and very similar to Twitter, but here focused on communities. Let's say I join this community, and I'm seeing that this very tasty shoe has a lot of activity. 73 plus ones, seven shares, three comments. Well, I'm going to go here also and plus one other people's com content. I'm going to share other people's content and comment. That's the dialogue. I'm being part of the conversation, not just always being about me, 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 and selling something. I want to join in and say something. Maybe ask a question. So, so sweet to right here. Good morning. Have a sweet day. I'm going to write something here. Amazing photo. It's making us hungry. So being positive gets you positive results. Being negative gets you negative results. So if you comment positively, ask nice questions and so forth, you will get that in return. And I want that for my own for my own um, for my own website and my own profile. On Google Plus, you can also mention other profiles. So as soon as, um, well, let me get back to that in a moment. Uh, but as soon as I post a comment or plus one or share, the original poster gets a notification. So if I do any of that to this post, Lila will get a notification up on that little bell there. It'll say Victor's Bakery plus one your your post, then they can of course ignore it, they can go check out my profile, they can plus one my content or my comment, you can plus one people's comments, if you hover over them you'll see the plus one. And then maybe if I've got really cool stuff, then Lila might follow my account, so I've got a follower. Also, all of the people that have commented, that have been a part of this conversation, get a notification. So if I add a comment at the very end here,
and I post that comment, Sharon gets a notification, Tim Lane gets one, Vivian, looks me, they all get a notification that I interacted with that post. That could alert them and check out who's this Victor's Bakery. And again, then they might uh, plus one, share, comment, or follow. One of the things that's very popular on Google Plus are polls. They used to have polls on Facebook, they took them away, but you've got polls on Google Plus where you can post a picture with a couple of choices and, and get and get um, get results. This one, for example, pumpkin pie dessert pizza with maple whipped cream. The choices are a great twist or I prefer the classic, and it's already got 249 votes. So let's say you post something, ask a question, make a poll, and get results. So let's do a class vote here. Uh, how many of you, raise your hand, how many of you like a pecan pumpkin pie dessert pizza with maple make maple cream or the or the old one? So who likes the new version? This weird crazy new version? Pizza? Yeah. yeah. Who likes the classic one? The non-pizza one? Okay, most people voted non, so we'll vote. I prefer the classic. Look at that, more people like the, the weird new pizza one. And the cool thing is that you can actually see who voted for these crazy things. You can click on the... Are the, you this to vote? I'll show you in one moment. But um, you can click on who voted for what and it'll show you right there. So Latoria voted for that, Orion voted for that, Felicia voted for that, and then the real people like us, Sarah and Bell and Yvonne voted for the classic. So the point of this is that these people are active. These people are voting and commenting and such. I can go then to Orion, click on on his um, profile and look at what he's got here. And so then plus one it, reply to it. He gets a notification. Victor's Bakery plus one your your post. Then he might do the same to mine, and maybe even follow me. So I'm building an audience. Okay, so how to make the questions. I'm going to go back to... You can post on a community or outside of one. Um, so I'm just going to go to a community, and it's right here. We have the ability to write a text post, photo post, or poll. Those are the questions. So if I click on poll, we ask a question. Which is tastier? And I can add pictures and choices. So I'm going to go rip off some pictures, but hopefully you have your own pictures. So I'm going to upload a picture. I'm going to add another picture. So I've got two pictures. There's choice one and choice two, which is tastier. So I'm going to say Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Pac-Man. And I'm going to put it into the right category. Let's see where does this fit. Biscuits and cookies. Puddings. Uh, I'll put it under biscuits and cookies. And share. So now my poll with, you know, tasty pictures and maybe a funny question has been put to a community with half a million people. So I have no followers at the moment, but now potentially 500,000 people have seen it. And then eventually as people start to interact, I'll get a notification up here. 
that people are replying or commenting or voting. And I'm then being social in social media. So one more thing, then we'll uh, wrap up the day. Uh, I was going to say a moment ago. Okay, we're posting co to communities. We can. We talked about polls, and talked about. Um, I was about to then say about mentioning other people. So, uh, you when you write content or when you reply, it mentions the. Um, it alerts the people in that particular thread, but um, if you want to mention other people that are not in in the message, you can always you start writing a person's name, you add the plus symbol, the plus, and then start writing a name. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but you you, you write the plus symbol and you start writing a name, and then it'll show you a list of possible names. This, however, doesn't show you all possibilities. It's just five. And it's going to first show you the ones that you might already have a connection with. So if you want to alert other people that are not part of this conversation to this conversation, you can do plus and write their name. And if they show up there, John Smith Q Ventures, the original poster, ACLS Training Center, will get a notification. If there were other people that had interacted with this post, they would get a notification. And I hear John Smith will get a notification. So yes, clearly this is a way that this could be abused. I don't know who John Smith is, but now I made him part of this conversation. So I'm showing you how to do this, but I'm telling you, don't be a spammer. Don't put in 50 names here to get their attention. You want to connect with the people that really care. This community is way too depressing. How can you be in contact with the people that are not on those files? If there is a person you know who has a murder on that, it's not listed on your. Unfortunately, sometimes it, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, quite reach out to the right person. Um, the best way to make sure that it does reach the right person is to first have them circled. Circle them so that you're connected, and then the connection should show up first. If you're not connected with them, then they might show up, you know, they might be the 40th name and it's only going to show you five or six or something, so you might not see it. I think you can... I think you can also put in an email address. So if you know their email address, You can't do it on the community, right? You can only send it to your friends or like public. So yeah. In order to go to the community, you, can, you have to go directly to it. Yeah, you okay. can you can do it either on the web or on the app, but the email it's not going to be very effective. Okay, because on the email you can post to your page, but not on the community. Mm -hmm.
yeah, so emails are not as effective as they could be because it wants you to uh, be part of the network, the social network. So any general questions before I pull up the homework? Okay, so I'm going to pull up the homework. Uh, if you'd like to, you can also look at the homework assignment. I'll explain it. It's going to be a, due a week from today. Okay, so I'm going to look at the assignments section in Blackboard, Google Plus assignment. You're going to need to create a Google Plus personal profile and then a Google Plus business page. We did that last time. You're going to need to add your profile photo, biography, and any links. There's a spot there to add links send me an email with your Google Plus address. Oh, I forgot about this one. So to get your address, you want to be logged into your business page and go to Google Plus page link. And at the moment, your address is going to be this huge address up here. That's fine. Just send me the link to your address once you see Google Plus page. As you use Google Plus and fill out all the details, eventually you'll get a notification at the top that says, claim your short name. You want to claim your short name. At the moment, it doesn't let me yet. So it's okay if you send me that huge address there. Eventually, you can get a short name, something like that, and you'll be easily findable. So you're going to send me your link to your business, not your personal, the business one. And then post content to Google+. Post at least one image to a community, and post at least one video to a community. I didn't talk about videos, but you can figure it out. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there for you to share, or if you have your own videos, great, share that to a community. And then you're going to be tracking your analytics. In your analytics document, you're going to start to track followers and views. So you'll see that in your, again, in your screen of Google Plus page, you're going to see here how many followers and how many views you have. Eventually, it'll start to have data once you use it, but in the very beginning, they're going to be zero, and that's fine. Hopefully, the more you use it, the more activity you get, and you won't have to be putting zero, zero, zero every Monday. This is worth 10 points. It's due a week from today for full credit. Any questions on the homework? Okay, so we'll have some lab time until uh, the end of the class. And uh, if you need to work on anything, I'll be here to help you. When we come back next time, we'll keep learning some more networks. Is there any way to reach um, full views from one page to another? You mean like you have some followers on one page and you want them to go to another page? Oh, the views. Oh, like you want to merge them together. I'm not sure. I, I think you can. I haven't done it myself, but I would go over here. If you hover over the menu, at the very bottom you're going to see help, and the help system is pretty useful. So maybe looking at here, merging merge Google Plus pages, merge to accounts. So read those and I think you, you might be able to put them together so you don't lose those views and just have one account. <laughs>